building your self-esteem and knowing your value. That's the topic we're going to talk about today on Self Love Monday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook. Get rid of your problems, not your partner. Now, this topic comes into being because there's uh, I've had a lot of people talking about the low self-esteem. How do I build my self-esteem? And where this comes from is unfortunately something that society has taught people. Think about this. Have you, could you imagine an elephant looking at a lion and saying, wow, I wish I was a lion? Or a lion looking at an elephant and saying, I wish I was an elephant? Or an ant looking at any other insect, insect and saying, I wish I was? And unfortunately, we're in a society that we spend our entire lives looking at other people and saying, I wish I had or wish I could be or you guys follow where I'm headed. It's we're taught that we've gotten to a point and you guys have heard me talk about the example of we know you're significant because of the fact that you're here. Whatever the numbers are, we know the number is huge. Your chances of actually being born is extremely high. So we know you've already won the, the, the biggest race you'll ever have. So we know you're significant because you're here. But the world got you here and started to try to reprogram you and try to tell you that you have to be at a certain level. You have to have certain things in your life. You have to be all these things that you're not in order to become significant or to have value or to be worth. Uh, have any worth, I should say. And my thing is to tell you, we have to interrupt that pattern and understand. Um, there was an example I used. I remember I was in the car and there was a young lady um, she was 16 and her and uh, her sister was 20. As a matter of fact, the 20 year old was the one having the conversation. And she was feeling really bad because she was saying her sister was going into the service and um, that she was doing something significant with her life and that everybody was going to look at her and worship her sister because here it is. She was going to be a military young, young lady and, you know, all this kind of stuff. So she was really building up her sister and at the same time tearing herself down. And she was saying, only thing that she was going to do is she wanted to learn how to, you know, she was learning different languages. She was going to do be a transcriber, uh, court reporting and transcribing in different languages and that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and that's where she was going to do with her life. And it just didn't have the same ring to her as her sister being in the military. And that's what destroys people, the, the steam issues, because we, we're comparing we get so caught in this comparing instead of un understanding our significance, our value, our worth. We're here to be unique and to walk out that uniqueness and enjoy this journey. And so what I shared with her is an example. I said, if you get a chair, a magnificent chair, an elegant chair, <laughs> however you want to describe it. And I told her, I said, let me ask you a question. Let's say you're the button on that chair or the thread on that chair. Stuff that people don't really notice. They know it's there, but they don't really pay attention to it. But let's say as a button, you pop off of that chair. Think people notice? They see a big old little gap right there where a button used to be. And it kind of takes away the value of the chair. The same thing I told her, if you're the thread, the thread is missing. Now part of the chair starts to open up. Maybe start some of the foam that's inside starts to show. See, the value of the chair is being interrupted. Folks, you got to understand, and that's what I shared with her. I said, I want you to remember, I don't care if you think you're the button. I don't care if you think you're the thread. Understand without you, the chair has no significance. It loses a lot, if not all, of its value. Matter of fact, in most people's case, when a button is missing and a thread is missing, the chair goes in the trash. We know that because we're looking to replace it, right? You have those unique where people say it's an antique chair or a certain person, again, that we've put on a pedestal, um, that we gave them 
more value than they deserve. And I know some people don't like the fact to hear me say that, but they don't. They're a human being. They walk like you. They talk like you. They may have done some great things in their life. I always say give people their praise and recognition for the things that they accomplish. Do not put them on a pedestal. Do not believe in their... I was listening to, listen to Lisa Nichols make the comment, and it was a powerful illustration she used. She said, the reason you look at me, and I'm paraphrasing, but she said, the reason you look at me and talk about my greatness and you're excited about my greatness is you're using that as an excuse for you not to go out and do what you need to do. I was like, whoa, that's powerful because it's real. We put people on pedestals. We look at people's greatness and we talk about how great they are. We do that. Or we'll say a person was born with this ability and we, we do all these different things. But the reason we do that is to justify where we are and then also to give us an excuse and a bailout for not going out and being the best that we can be. So my thing is, understand no matter what the world is telling you, because you guys know I talk about this all the time. It's a lot of misleading information that's been given out of here. A lot of bad information that people are sharing and it's passed down from generation to generation. This is why I have a true belief and I'm always telling people tradition is to learn from, not live by. See, the things you're telling me what our ancestors did, that's beautiful, that's great if you want to share it. They ain't got nothing to do with what's going on today. My ancestors didn't have airplanes. My ancestors didn't have cars. My ancestors weren't living in, in communities like we're living now with a whole bunch of high rises. And, and The environment has changed. Technology has changed. They didn't have the internet. How is a person from there going to tell me how I should be living today? See, that's why I keep telling people we, we get stuck in this stuff and we keep passing on from generation to generation the exact same thought processes and wonder why we're sitting still and we can't truly grow beyond that which we think is possible. When we get to the point where we understand tradition is to learn from, see if it still holds true today. If so, let's keep using it. And if not, let's make some adjustments. Isn't that what you do in your business? Isn't that what you do? You know, just like I used the example, I told you guys, you know, um, my dad, you know, because he knows I'm always into self-development, reading books, listening to tapes, you know, he's like, boy, you good people, ain't nothing wrong with you. And I said, I'm going to be here anyway. Might as well work on striving to get better. See, folks, there's a difference in that. This is not me trying to build my self-esteem, build my self-worth, comparing myself to anyone else. I'm not. I just want to be a better me every minute that I can. In other words, I want to become more understanding, more patient, more control. I mean, I don't get angry. It, it takes a lot to get me to that level, but I want to be able to control when I do get to those levels. You see, those are the things where I'm talking about getting better because I want to just be a better version of Ron. Um, we've used, you know, because you hear people, you'll go to events and, and, and it's been, you know, it's been asked where people go, if you could be anybody for a day, anybody for an hour, who would that be? And folks, I have always said with no hesitation, and I'm telling it to you right now with no hesitation, there's no person in this world I'd rather be than Ron Myers. That's it. I love that guy. Does he have areas that he's looking to get better at? Yep. Does he work, quote unquote, on his self-esteem, as people call it? Yep. Does he have obstacles? Yes. Does he have challenges? Yes. And I still love that guy. And I wouldn't trade him in for anybody, for anything in the world. Folks, when I say that, and I know for some people that's hard to believe because they're like, no, wouldn't you want to be a certain star? No, I don't want to be no one but Ron Myers. That's it. Whoever Ron Myers is, me, the person you're looking at, because we know that name was given to me. But this guy, this guy that was put here on this planet, because I understand I'm unique. I understand my value. I understand. That's why I guess maybe in some instances I'm almost rebellious because I understand I was put here to be, be unique. I was put here to walk out my journey, not someone else's. That's why I tell people if you're in a relationship and your goal is to change the other person, then you're with the wrong person. And folks, if you're with someone who's trying to change you, you're with the wrong person. You're unique. You're valuable. 
You're worthy. Understand that. Those that are around you don't understand that, then don't have them around you. This is not about you. There's a saying that says, we're all born as originals and most die as copies. Folks, that's real. Quit trying to compare yourself, trying to be like other people. Uh, there's another saying, what is it? Uh, be the best you possible because everybody else is taken. Same thing. It's like, don't try to be somebody else. Don't try, don't, again, pull people off of their pedestals if you've put them there. Nobody belongs on a pedestal. Nobody. Folks, nobody. I don't know how many times I can say that to stress it. Nobody belongs on a pedestal. I don't care if you go to certain countries where they're talking about we got a queen and she's the princess or nobody deserves to be put on a pedestal. Every human being, no one's better than you, no one's worse than you. Unfortunately, and I mean unfortunately, we're in a world who tries to separate us and is always trying to put someone on top and is always trying to have someone they can look at. And again, for a lot of people, because again, as Lisa Nichols says, it allows you not to go after what you want because you look and go, but I can never get there. And then for some people, it's because they have such a low, they do have the low self-esteem and they feel they have to be up here, up high so that they can look down on others. Folks, understand when a person's in that 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 particular mindset, they don't have a, a high self-esteem. See, we think people that that are, you know, up there and, you know, that kind of stuff that they have a very. No, majority of them have a very low self-esteem. That's why they look down on other people. That's why they tear down other people. All that stuff is to make them feel better about themselves versus understanding they're valuable. They're worthy. And you guys hear me say it all the time regardless of the earthly, the material thing. Because one thing we know for sure, and we've all heard it many times, and we've probably said it ourselves, you ain't taking none of this stuff with you. None of it. I remember, <laughs> this reminded me of uh, this one uh, joke they were saying. Well, I don't even think, supposedly it wasn't a joke, but this guy had passed away, and he told his wife that, and whether it's a joke or it's real, it's, it's still funny, but she, uh, he told her when he passes away, he's taking all his money with him, which is crazy. If you're married, you're going to tell your wife, you're taking all your money with you. But anyway, that's what he said. And so when he passed away, that was one of the things that he said is all his money's going with him. And so the wife was asked, did you really put all that money with him? And she said, yeah, I wrote him a check. <laughs> I died laughing. I said, yep, it all went with him. So the key is, but if that check gets cashed, boy, we got some bigger issues going on. But she gave him a check so he can feel comfortable believing he got all his money with him. But we all know she's enjoying that. And I don't blame her. That's exactly what I did to wrote him a check. There you go. You got your money. And in the meantime, I'm enjoying the physical money and you can have your paper money. But uh, anyway, the key is, Get people and things and, and exterior stuff. Don't compare yourself. Don't look at anything as big. Um, who was I listening to? What's the name? Sad, Sad, Sadich Guru. S-A-D-H Guru. G-U-R-U. And he was talking about that. He was kind of saying the same thing. He said, could you imagine a coconut tree wanting to be a mango? Or, or you know, or using those as an example. And, it, and it's real. They understand that nobody's trying to sit around and figure out how do I be someone else except for humans who we claim and act like we're so sophisticated and we're so intellectual. But we're the only ones that are having these problems. We're the only ones talking about I have a low self-esteem. I need to figure out my worth. I need to become more valuable. I need, instead of accepting yourself as you are and enjoying this journey we call life and all the different things that cross your path. And you guys hear me say that all the time. That's really the purpose of life is actually that we're making it mystical. We came here for one reason, to enjoy this journey and have an ex uh, human and not necessarily enjoy it. Just saying, but we came here to experience. That's really what I meant to say. We came here to experience the human uh, uh, life 
and all the things that come along with it. So all the different emotions, that's a part of the journey. And we're all making it sound like it's something wrong. Folks, I've talked about this in the past. The don't want, the things that we say we don't want in our life, those can be our best friends if we understand what don't want really means. Because don't want is what makes you take action to get what you want. Think about it. I'm actually sitting on a chair right now. I can imagine there was at a point a person was sitting on the floor and decided they didn't want to sit on the floor. They didn't want it. They didn't want to sit on the floor no more. So they created a chair. Voila. They didn't want to keep holding their bowl in their hand, so they created the table. And we know you guys got the idea. You just go on and on. Don't want is what opens up the creative juices in your life to say, what do you want? And that's why you hear me say that in relationships. A lot of times people can't figure out what they want in a relationship. Ask yourself what you don't want. <laughs> Woo, that list will be long. You can write a book on what you don't want. Sometimes we have a hard time figuring out what we do want. But what you don't want, reverse that list. Now you know exactly what you do want. So, so let don't want be your friend. But anyway, but the, the bottom line of this particular talk we're having today is understand your worth, your value. Doesn't matter if you're a button. Doesn't matter if you're the thread that's in the chair. You are valuable. You are significant. Never let anyone make you believe anything different. And anyone that tries to are the people that you try and stay away from or just stay away from you know, you don't try because we know as we hear try try is not possible either you do or you don't but those are people and again you guys heard me say again if there's somebody really close to you that's in your life and they play a major role in your life just make sure you don't give them too much time so but the bottom line is you guys know it ain't right it ain't wrong it is my opinion but whatever you're doing make sure you understand your worth and your value button or thread and you guys know so whatever you're uh, uh again i was gonna say if you're not having fun you should be doing something else but i was gonna actually say um for those of you who just come on mondays i look forward to talking to you next monday on self-love monday and for those of you that we're getting into the relationship stuff i'll talk to you on relationship thursday but again if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. And folks, go out here and understand your value, your worth. Quit trying to be someone else. Quit trying to be the elephant trying to be the lion or the lion trying to be the elephant. And enjoy who you are and look in the mirror and say, I love me some me. I'll talk to you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.